How's it going everybody? White Mudahar here. I wanted to try something a little bit different in this video, so I got a uh, head-mounted mic, and you can see it right there on my face. But unfortunately, it sounds like dog water. I did my best with the post-processing and audio effects knowledge that I have. I've already returned this mic, I got a new one, uh, you're actually listening to it right now. And I'll talk in greater detail about this in the uh, members only video that's coming out alongside this video. And if that is of any interest to you, I would suggest you stick around to the end of the video. Anyway, uh, back to gaming. Hello, gamers. Welcome to uh, our brand new set that we got going on with some new equipment, like a new microphone and some stuff going on here with the, you can see the audio recording. I think this is really cool. I know that a lot of people don't like seeing their like audio waveforms in the background, but I think, I think it's, I think it adds a nice little touch to the recording. So I think I'm going to keep it. And then we also got this big ass, like, hold on, let me just, there we go. This big ass CRT in the background here, just for a little bit of ambiance. And uh, pay no mind to uh, <laughs> pay no mind to the brown paper that's taped up over the window, because uh, that led. You can probably see in the corners that there's a lot of like light bleed there, and it really fucks up the lighting in this room. So I'm gonna get curtains eventually. Uh, for the time being, that's just gonna have to stay there. <laughs> and I might hang up some art here. I know I have a lot of posters just kind of sitting around doing nothing. So like, uh, maybe I can do something cool with that. Anyway, what are we talking about today? Ah, yes, controllers. This might come as a little bit of a shock to you, but I've been paying attention to video games for quite a long time. Playing games, talking about games, making videos on games, watching videos on games. I've, I've really sort of immersed myself in the gaming industry. And I've recently become obsessed with like video game controllers and how they're designed, how they're shaped, how they feel in the hand, what features do they have? So I've amassed a little bit of a collection of controllers down here. And nowadays I do a lot of my gaming on some form of PC, whether it be a big old tower like this guy or a Steam Deck or a laptop or whatever. Even though you can see all this stuff in the background, I'm not really much of a console gamer anymore. And the cool thing is that on PC, you can use any controller you want. Like I'm able to use a Wii remote on PC and I can play like Wii games and stuff. I think that's pretty cool. And because the Steam Deck is just a PC, I could use any of these controllers on this device. Cause let's say you wanted to take your Steam Deck and hook it up to a TV and use it primarily as a home video game console. Like wh what controllers should you get for it? There isn't exactly a Steam controller anymore. So what we're doing today is we're gonna take the three controllers from the big three hardware manufacturers and we're gonna compare them. Like uh, how high quality are they? Like what kind of features do they have? Do they even work on Steam OS at all? Because, like, all of these controllers are $70 now, and if you're going to be expected to spend $70 on a fucking video game controller, you want it to be good, right? And we're going to be trying to, like, narrow down a one-stop shop for controllers. I don't want to have a controller that, like, say, for example, the N64 controller right here. I only use this when I play N64 games. I don't think anybody would say that this is a wise investment. Unless they already have like a deep uh, emotional connection to the N64 library or whatever. We don't want something specific. We want something that you can use for pretty much anything. 3D games, 2D games, shooters, racing games, all kinds of stuff. Because uh, like that's how most people are. They want to spend their money on one controller and just use that one controller. So that's enough of an introduction. Let's go ahead and start off with the uh, PlayStation 5 controller, otherwise known as the DualSense. I'll be honest, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this thing. Like, yeah, it's good. For $70, you would hope so. My biggest gripe with this controller is this trackpad up here. Because don't get me wrong, the trackpad is neat, and the weird rumble features they have are kind of cool in concept, and the adaptive triggers seem cool, I guess. But the problem is, I can't use any of it. All of the unique features of the DualSense are pretty much exclusive to the PlayStation 5. And obviously that makes sense, you know? Sony wants you to buy their hardware for their systems, and expecting these features to work on a completely different system is baffling, right? But Sony's been trying to make an effort to port more of their games to PC, and uh, I'm just saying, Sony, if you really want people to buy more of your hardware, having your unique features work on PC would be a good thing. And I should say that the trackpad does technically work on PC. Like, you can use it to move your mouse around with Steam input, but, like, I don't know. I don't really feel like that's that useful. But, you know, some good things about this controller. Uh, it's got gyro aim in it, which I am a huge fan of. I've talked about this before in other videos, but I'll just reiterate my points here. 
I think gyro aim is the future of like aiming technology in video games. It comes as close as possible to like the accuracy of a keyboard and mouse with a device that like fits in your hands better. And there are loads of different videos out there talking about gyro aim and like the flick stick style of aiming, which I'm going to put like a little clip of it right here in the corner. Highly recommend you check out this video by Jibsmart. And it's able to connect to my PC and my Steam Deck wirelessly, no problems. So like, yeah, it's a good controller. And again, for $70, you would want it to be good. But uh, if you've already got like a DualShock 4 at home and you're happily using that, don't even bother. Just, just stick with your DualShock 4. <laughs> All right, so next up on the list is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now, if you were to talk to me in, say, 2017, I would have told you that this is the best controller out there, hands down. You know, this was back when I was still kind of a Nintendo fanboy, and, uh, like, to their credit, the Switch Pro Controller is probably the best controller they've ever put out. I mean, second best only to the Wii U gamepad. I mean, how far can I take this joke? Like, I unironically like the Wii U gamepad, so... <laughs> Anyway, back to the Switch Pro Controller. Uh, this thing has all of the features of the DualSense, minus the trackpad, obviously. It's got the gyro aim. I like that a lot. It connects wirelessly, no problems. This and the DualSense also have a nice heft to them, so they don't feel like they're kind of nothing in your hands. A good example to the contrary would be this uh, Power A GameCube Pro Controller knockoff thing that I've got here. I don't think it's possible for me to show this up on camera without like getting a scale out, but uh, this thing is way lighter and it just, it, it feels like I could crush this thing with my hands. So that nice heft for a controller is like a good thing. But there are two big flaws to this controller that make it so that I wouldn't recommend it for PC gaming. The more minor of the two issues is that the Switch Pro Controller does not have analog triggers. Which you might think isn't that big of a deal, but for certain games it can be. Like if you like to play a lot of racing games, then uh, the Switch Pro Controller is going to be a nightmare for you. And the biggest issue I have with this controller is, um, this D-pad is terrible. <laughs> Now that might sound a bit crazy considering Nintendo literally invented the D-pad and has the Super Nintendo controller, which arguably has the best D-pad in video games, just saying. It's a little wild to think that Nintendo would put out a controller that has as shockingly bad of a D-pad as this one. Okay, I'm going to compare this D-pad with uh, the DualSense D-pad down there, and I'm gonna put out some B-roll footage here on the screen. If I were to hold down on the D-pad and gently rock it back and forth, without intentionally trying to tap left or right, the DualSense D-pad would not register left or right and would continuously register the down input. Not the case with the Switch Pro Controller. You'll be trying to hit right or left and unintentionally hit down or up, for example. So for 2D platformers and stuff like that, it just, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't feel good to use this thing. The sad part is that everything else is really good. Like the analog sticks are good, the buttons are good, the triggers, even though they're not analog, they still feel good to press. And everything is nice and responsive, even on PC. Now there is the weird situation of the Nintendo layout of buttons here. Like here, for example, let's get out an Xbox 360 controller. If I were to do a little bit of a close-up shot, you can see that the buttons are like positioned in different places. And this is just emulating what Nintendo has always been doing with their buttons uh, since the Super Nintendo. So ironically enough, it was Xbox who was trying to break the mold on things. But the 360 controller is essentially the standard for controllers now. So like it or not, this is what we have to deal with. And when you're using the Switch Pro controller on PC, it's going to think that you're holding an Xbox 360 controller. So either uh, understand that the buttons are not going to be labeled correctly, or you can go into the Steam controller layout options and uh, tick this little option that says you can use the Nintendo layout and it will automatically adjust what buttons are what. Now, I don't use this feature because I have like built-in muscle memory for certain games using Xbox controllers. So I just sort of deal with the incorrect labeling on the buttons, but you might get more mileage out of that option than me. All right, last on the list is the Xbox Series X controller. I mean, like I said earlier, Xbox basically made the standard for controllers on PC gaming, so th this thing has to be good, right? It has to be built in mind with PC gaming, and it has to have all the features that you would want out of a normal, modern controller. It's got to have all that stuff built into it, and it just works, and there's no finagling with features, and who am I kidding? I'm lying. This controller sucks, and I fucking hate it. Now, you might be thinking that uh, me hating this controller is a little extreme. You're not wrong. <laughs> But there are a few little issues that I have with it, as well as a few major issues, and I'll get into that. Don't worry. 
let's start with something relatively minor. This D-pad is terrible. But it's terrible in a different way to the Switch Pro Controller, because it's a D-pad that was meant to be used for primarily 3D games. And this, this is a problem that's existed ever since the original Xbox controller. And it exists on the 360 controller too, like their, their D-pads have always been shit. But this one is like a new level where it's like really overly clicky buttons and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It feels like you have an analog stick on top of a D-pad. Like that's the best way I can describe it. Like it feels like they tried to put like an analog stick sort of feeling on top of the buttons of a D-pad. And in my opinion, it, it just doesn't work. Another thing that you would think I would complain about, but actually I do like, uh, is the fact that you can use AA batteries to power this controller. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about this, where there's no built-in rechargeable battery and you have to supply the batteries yourself. And yes, that is incredibly annoying. Especially when you consider that certain controllers will have this removable, rechargeable battery built in that you can take out and have the option to use double A's if need be. Like a random no-name controller can do this feature, but like Microsoft with their infinite money just can't spare the rechargeable battery and their premier controller. Fuck you, Microsoft. I should stress, there is an extreme anti-Microsoft bias on this channel, and my review of this controller will reflect that. <laughs> and like I said, I appreciate the option of being able to use double A's if your rechargeable battery happens to die on you, and you, for some reason, don't have time to charge it. But the fact that I paid $70 for this controller, and it doesn't come with the rechargeable battery, but a $50 controller does? And this controller has more features than this? It's, it's a little insulting. And to say something nice again, uh, it is still a nice controller. <laughs> I like the way the analog triggers feel. There's a little bit of a texture here on the bottom that is makes it a little bit easier to grip on. I like all the different colorways that these controllers have. There are some good features to the Xbox controllers. I wish it worked on my computer. If I wanted to plug in a USB-C cable, which by the way, this controller did not come with a USB-C cable, thank you, Microsoft, it would work just fine. As a wired controller, the Xbox Series X controller is actually pretty good, but we live in 2024 and I should not have to use a $70 controller wired because your fucking drivers do not work with Linux or SteamOS, Microsoft. And believe me, I tried to make this thing work. I downloaded all kinds of packages. I downloaded all kinds of kernel modules. I reinstalled things. I set certain features. I disabled certain things. And this controller could not talk to my Linux computers at all. The most bizarre thing is that it could connect, but as soon as it connected, it just wouldn't talk to Steam or any games that I tried to play with it. The controller would just have its light flashing up here like it was still in Bluetooth pairing mode. And I know, I know, if I was on Windows, like 96% of gamers are, it probably would have worked just fine. But I do not run Windows. I gave that up years ago. The Steam Deck does not run Windows on its own. You have to do that one yourself. I don't know why you would, but you can. So, and, and by the way, I did test this controller on the Steam Deck. The S Nintendo Switch Pro controller and the DualSense over there paired with the Steam Deck, just fine. Paired with all of my Linux computers, just fine. I don't know why Microsoft's controller doesn't. Maybe it's a Bluetooth spec thing. Maybe it's like because of some driver issue. Maybe it's just because Microsoft is smoking a little bit of cock on the side. I don't fucking know. My point is, is that if you're trying to get a controller for the Steam Deck or you also happen to be a Linux gamer, shout out to you. The Series X controller is probably the worst deal out of all three of these. No gyro aim, no wireless functionality, no rechargeable battery. Like what? I spent $70 on this? <laughs> and we didn't even get into the biggest problem with this controller. And it's an issue that exists on all of these controllers here on this table. The plague of stick drift. So if you've been playing video games, I don't know, at all over the past four or five years, then you've probably encountered the phenomenon known as stick drift. This is where a controller's analog stick will just fuck up and register the wrong inputs, and it, 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 you can't fix it. 
there's a big reason why you can't fix it, and that's because the, the, the actual mechanisms that make the control stick work are two pieces of graphite that rub against each other, and if you do that enough times, then it'll break, and it'll fuck up the registers of the inputs and everything. And that leads to stuff like this, and it just, it's, it sucks. <laughs> Especially when you consider these controllers, again, are $70, and they last for a year, two years tops. And for the record, this is why I find the PlayStation 5's, like, pro controller genuinely offensive. Like, you inst like instead of just using Hall Effect joysticks and making a more functional and longer-lasting controller, you instead develop this bullshit, where you can just swap out analog sticks? What the fuck is this? And if you're a fan of this channel, then you might have already heard me talk about this or scream about it or just kind of be a fucking autistic chimp about it. I talked about this N64 controller and how it has a Hall Effect joystick inside of it and how I mentioned that that would be really cool if that was the standard for control sticks going forward and all kinds of fun stuff like that. But no, that's not the future we live in. All of the like main console manufacturers, all their controllers still use potentiometer joysticks and like they're just gonna die one day. And honestly, for the same price, I would gladly pay for a controller that is just as high quality with just as many features, but also having Hall Effect joysticks in it, maybe having a couple other features on top of it that are a little bit better than the other three controllers we just talked about. That'd be pretty crazy. That'd be pretty wild. I mean, but that controller just doesn't exist. I'm oh. All right, nuts on the table here. This whole video was just a, uh, a front for me to talk about the 8 Bido Pro Controller. Ultimate Controller? Yeah, Ultimate Controller. Because uh, I'm a little bit of a shill for them, I'm not gonna lie. Reason being is because they just make the best controllers. I mean, for God's sakes, I already talked about the uh, Pro 2 in this video alone, having the rechargeable battery and stuff like that. This used to be my go-to controller before it unfortunately succumbed to stick drift. It's very minor. It's extremely minor stick drift right now, but even the best controllers will still die one day because of their flawed joystick design. But that's not the case with this controller as it uses Hall Effect sensors in their joysticks. That means that it uses magnets instead of two pieces of graphite rubbing against each other. So there's no like material friction. It's instead just two magnets kind of rotating sort of next to each other. And that is what supplies the current that determines where the joystick is. I'm not an electrical engineer, as you can tell. I'm just some nerd who likes controllers a little bit too much. I'll put a link in the description to some cool videos talking about Hall Effect sensors, and you can get more information there. But back to this controller. Like, honestly, I think it is the best features of the Pro 2, my previously favorite controller, combined with new features that just... Just make it better. <laughs> like, I didn't think that 8 Bido could get much better than this. Like, genuinely. I am a little bit sad that they got rid of the PlayStation layout. I'm a little bit more of a fan of this layout of controllers. Just because I like having, uh, like, quick access to the D-pad for, like, 2D games and stuff like that. But after playing, like, a little bit of Celeste with this controller, uh, the D-pad feels fine. And when I say fine, I mean, like, well, one of the highest quality D-pads I've felt since the Super Nintendo controller. Again, extremely surprising that some sort of no-name third-party whatever is outdoing Nintendo, the literal inventors of the D-pad at their own game, but... And like I said earlier, this controller has all of the features of the other three controllers that I just talked about, except the DualSense's unique features. Like, there's no adaptive triggers on this thing. This controller is more intended to be a replacement for the Switch Pro controller. And honestly, I, I think it does a really good job of replacing it. You got the analog triggers, the gyro aim, the Hall Effect joysticks. You still got the Nintendo layout of buttons, which I don't know if that's a make or break for you, but just figured I'd mention it. And you've also got the removable... That It was so close to being perfect. Like, genuinely, it was so close to being perfect. I, I think it's a little crazy that a $50 controller is able to have a removable lithium-ion battery, but a $70 controller can't. Like, it's just... Hmm. I don't understand why everyone is so against using removable batteries, but just whatever. For the record, that is like the biggest problem I have with this controller. Like, if that is the biggest problem I have with it, then... I don't know, it's kind of doing something right. And I did mention that there are features this controller has that make it a little bit better than the other ones. And I was correct, let me go get it. So not only does this controller come with a USB-C cable, which you'd be surprised how much of a feature that is these days, but it also comes with a stand. 
It's also a rechargeable stand, so you can just plug a USB-C cable in the back and plop this controller down and like, it'll just keep itself charged. And as if I couldn't shill this controller enough, the piece de resistance, the thing that I think makes it the like number one, like you need to buy this controller feature. In the bottom of the stand here, whoa, there's also a little USB receiver. So that means you can use this controller on both Bluetooth and using this little wireless receiver. Kind of a cool feature, right? Just in case you need it for whatever reason. The dock actually allows you to have USB pass through from uh, the dock to your computer. So that means if you have the dock plugged into your PC and you switch the little switch on the back here to 2.4 gigahertz, you can just leave the controller on the dock and when you take the controller off of the dock, it will automatically pair to your computer and just work just fine with no latency, no nothing. And then when you're done playing, you set it back on the stand, the controller turns off and starts charging. Like, it's hard for me to argue with this much convenience. And it makes sense for this thing to be $70 because it's a $50 controller and you get a little, like, you, you get the charging station with the USB pass-through and everything. Like, you, you get a lot for $70. And there are cheaper versions of this controller that don't come with the dock and only use 2.4 gigahertz. But I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, I would recommend that you splurge on the $70 version rather than the $50 version. And I say that not as just a shill for 8 Bido, although, again, I am a shill for them. I, I just want to tell you what the best product is from my experience, right? And I, the second 8 Bido stops being good and they start doing some of the bullshit that Microsoft is doing, because I know that they collab a lot with controllers. The second that bullshit sort of seeps over into the 8 Bido camp, I am dropping them permanently and I am making a whole video disavowing them. But that moment has yet to come. And uh, actually, there's a little bit of an update that like I didn't write this into the script because it happened as I was writing it. But uh, 8 Bido recently came up with a statement that says that their uh, Pro 2 line of controllers, they started putting Hall Effect sensors in these controllers. So even if you don't like this layout of, of buttons and sticks and everything, and you don't care about the stand, and you just want like a good like PlayStation layout of controller, this thing's going to have Hall Effect sensors in it too. And I'm harping on this Hall Effect sensor thing so much because it makes it so that your controllers will last a lot longer. Like, personally, I'd rather spend more to get the good thing once than, you know, spend, I don't know, $20 to get some piece of garbage knockoff that I'll have to replace in a year. And it makes it even more insulting when that piece of garbage I'll have to replace in a year costs the same as these two controllers. Fuck you, Microsoft. But look, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest here, all four of these controllers are good. I may like some of them more than others, but at the end of the day, they're all fine. And I would imagine that given different circumstances, some of these controllers could work better, like uh, the Xbox controller working better on a Windows PC, for example. Or maybe if you already bought a PS5 and are just looking for things to do with the controller, this is a good option for both Windows and Linux, and by extension, the Steam Deck. So if you've already got this controller lying around, it's a good option. Same thing with the Switch Pro Controller. You might run into some issues with the D-pad here, but if you've already got it, then might as well just use it. I don't want people to come away from this video thinking that they have to buy one controller or the other. If you don't have the money to buy a controller right now and you're perfectly happy with the one you're using right now, just keep using that one. I said that earlier when I mentioned the DualShock 4. Whatever your controller you have, I guarantee you that it has potentiometer joysticks in it. And if that controller isn't drifting now, it's gonna drift eventually. And for the record, Apido are not the only uh, controller manufacturers that use Hall Effect sensors. There are plenty of other controllers out there that use this technology. All I want you to do is remember this stuff whenever your controller starts to drift. Because if you're spending $70 on a controller, you want it to last. Hey, thanks for uh, watching this video, making it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. So I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that I'm going to be starting to do like members only content. Um, there will already be a, a video up by the time this video comes out that will be available for a members only. And it's going to be like a behind the scenes sort of like how this video was made, what lessons did I learn, uh, all that kind of more inside baseball kind of talk. So if you're interested in how the sausage is made, uh, you can go ahead and hit the join button right below this video, and uh, you'll get access to not only all of uh, the 
future membership con membership only content, but also the uh, previously Patreon only content. Uh, and there's a reason why the Patreon content is now members only. I will upload an update video in like a couple days going way more in depth about this. Um, I'll have a uh, link to the Patreon post that's like publicly available to everybody to read. So uh, you can just go ahead and get like an understanding of where I'm going if you don't really want to wait and you just want to know what I'm doing. And that's about all I wanted to say right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you uh, look forward to future videos and I uh, hope you learned something today. Have a good one, everybody.